morning, boys and girls. My name is Johnny, and I am your host today. Mr. Zorik asked me to cover for him, and I am so excited to be here. Kids Connection is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new program. And if this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, I'm going to invite you to sing our song of the day with us. And our song of the day is, God is for me. Let's sing it together. And I'm going to call my friend Paul to sing it with us. for singing a song with me, Paul. You're welcome. I love singing this song here at Kids Connection. Yes, yes, me too. Now, Paul, and boys and girls, I'm going to invite you to please bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this Kids Connection program. We invite you to be with us today. Be with all the boys and girls, moms, dads, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, we ask that you keep everyone safe at home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Paul. Yes, Johnny. Do you know what a dormitory is? Dormy what? Dormitory. No, I don't know. Boys and girls, do you know what a dormitory is? Well, a dormitory is a place where kids sleep in a school or a facility. So our mission story today, it comes from a girl. It's a story about a girl named Anchao and she lives in a dormitory in school. She is learning a lot more than just her school work. Let's watch our missionary story today.
when Anshal was eight. She left her small village and arrived at Varanasi Seventh-day Adventist School. She had no friends, she didn't respect the teachers, and she knew nothing about Jesus. Anshal moved into the dormitory and quickly began making friends. The dorm is a social place where students play games, relax, and do schoolwork. Many of the students spend time reading their Bibles. This was a totally different world to Anshal's previous life in the village, but she found herself enjoying Bible studies and trying to get good grades. Eventually, Anshal gave her heart to Jesus and is so grateful for her experience at the school. Really, God has blessed me so much that I learned so many stories and so many um, activities in this church, and I like them so much. And I, my favorite story is um, Job. Like Anshel, many students come to this school knowing nothing about Jesus, but their lives are transformed. They are immersed in a holistic learning experience. In addition to the standard subjects, Students learn about health, engage in fun activities, and enjoy delicious meals. Each Sabbath, students attend the Adventist House of Prayer, located right on campus. They often participate in the Sabbath program. Anshel and her friends love to sing for the congregation. We are having these children from the village area and they are learning Jesus and they know that this is all blessing coming in the name of Jesus to them and to their families. So that's how the message of love and Jesus is going to the rural area from this small school. God has blessed this school with more and more students each year, but unfortunately the dormitories are over full. The girls are crammed into a small space with bunk beds piled up against each other. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will help expand the girls' dormitory, allowing more girls to attend school. Present, we have only one room and we have 25 girls here. But then when the dorms are there, we will have around 60 girls in the dormitories. We will have just the double or triple of the girls studying in this. In this way, we'll be educating more students in our school. Please pray for Varanasi Seventh-day Adventist School. Pray that the teachers and students can continue to be a positive light for each other, like they were to Anshal. Please consider what you can do to help the girls at this school. Thank you for supporting projects such as this. Thank you for supporting Mission Offering. Well, Johnny, I didn't know that kids sleep in this school. Yes, yes, Paul. Kids sleep there and they learn about Jesus. But we can help them with our offerings. So boys and girls, don't forget to ask mom and dad to click on the donation just above and donate to the missionaries. You can also donate to our program Kids Connection. I will do that, Johnny. Yes. Me too, Paul. Oh. Where is Mr. Zorik? Well, he couldn't be here today, so he asked me to cover. And I am so happy to be here today. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> yes, yes, so excited. You know, Johnny, I'm excited too. Well, thanks for joining me, Paul. By the way, how was your week? My week was fun. You know, I heard a story from a friend of mine at school. His name is Peter. Oh, yes, yes. I know Peter. Yeah, you know what Peter said? What? Peter said that he went camping. Whoa, I love camping. What did he do? Well, he went camping and he climbed the tree. And he said that the tree was so high, he could almost touch the sky. Wow, oh, that is a tall tree. Yeah, yeah, but that wasn't all. Really? He said that he jumped from the top of the tree and he jumped inside of the lake and he didn't get hurt. 
Wow! That is fun! Yeah, but I'm not sure if he's saying the truth. It's probably true! You know, that adventure is nothing compared to what happened with me! Really? Yes, really! So, let me tell you my story! And you're gonna tell me if this is exciting! Mm, okay, what happened to you, Johnny? Well, Paul, see, I went to the zoo! You know, LA Zoo! Have you kids gone to LA Zoo? Have you gone to LA Zoo, Paul? Yes, I've been there. Well, me too! But, here is where my adventure starts! Mmm, tell me. Well, after seeing all the animals, I saw the giraffe, the chimps, the monkeys, the gorillas, I saw the tiger! What, Johnny? I got to the lion cage! Oh, yes, I know where the lion cage is. Yes, but let me tell you what happened. When I got there, I saw people running, running and screaming for their lives, and they were all running. Ah, 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 and I rushed to see what was going on. Do you know what happened? No, I don't know. Tell me, Johnny. The lion got out of his exhibit! What? Yes! Yes, Paul! The lion got out and the lion was chasing everyone! But do you know what, Paul? I was there and I was able to chase the lion and the lion was, was running from me and the lion was running from one side to the other and I was chasing the lion like a lion hunter and I was chasing and jumping over rocks and I was jumping over people and I say, lion, I'm gonna get you and I'm gonna put you back on your cage and the lion saw me coming and he ran and he ran and he ran and I continued to run and I was almost and the lion was almost out of the zoo and when I finally jumped and I caught the lion by the neck whoa Johnny yes 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 I caught the lion by the neck hmm Johnny Yes, wait, 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 but that's not all. That's just the beginning of the adventure. When I caught him by the neck, I dragged him all the way inside where his exhibit was. I put him in there and I closed the door. Whoa, Johnny. Wait, wait, wait. After that, everybody was asking for my autograph because I was the Lion Hunter! Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> Johnny? Yes, Bo? You know, I think Peter's story was kind of a lie. Really? Yes, and you know, Johnny. What, Paul? Jesus doesn't like when we lie. Well, but, but, you know, my adventure was fun because I was a lion hunter! Johnny? Yes, Paul? Are you sure your story is what really happened? Well, uh, kind of. Boys and girls, do you think that was what really happened with Johnny? Johnny? 
Jesus doesn't like when we lie. Well, Paul, you know, maybe I exaggerated a little bit. A little bit, Tony? Okay, okay, maybe a... a Johnny? Yes? Why don't you tell the boys and girls what really happened? But, you know, I was the lion hunter! Johnny! Okay, okay, I'll, I'll tell the truth. You know, I got to the LA Zoo. And I got really close to the lion cage. And the lion roared so loud, so loud. And I was scared. <laughs> I was scared and I was crying. I didn't want anybody to see me crying. But. Johnny, why did you say that you were the lion hunter? Because it was fun! I thought that you would like me more because the story was excited! I saw how happy you were with the story of Peter! And I wanted my story to be excited too! Wow! Johnny, you know, just because other people are telling lies, it doesn't mean that we have to lie too. Jesus wants us to have integrity. Integrity is when we stand by the truth. So, it doesn't mean that you like Peter more than me? No, Johnny. I like you because you're my friend, not because you tell lies or because you have adventures. You know, boys and girls, in the Bible today, in the story, we are going to learn of a man in the Bible who had integrity. Oh yes, yes, I heard Mr. Zorik say that today we're going to learn about Noah, and Noah was a man of integrity. That's right, Johnny. Noah was a man of integrity. And despite that all the people around him were doing bad things, he was a man of integrity. And he did the right thing, even though the ones around him didn't. Oh, that's why we are singing the song, God is for me, because even though all the people around us in this world are doing wrong things, we can always count on God to be right next to us. That's right, Johnny. How about we sing the song again, God is for me. Boys and girls, let's sing the song, God is for me again. Okay, okay, let's sing the song now.
My name is Johnny and I loved being your host today. I also want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for watching and being a part of our program. Oh, by the way, Mr. Sorry forgot to say last week, but last week we had two birthdays. Yes, it was Natalie's birthday. So Natalie, happy birthday. It was also Ellis, happy birthday, Ellis. I love you and we all here, we all love you here from Kids Connection. Parents, this afternoon it's Parents Connection on Zoom, so don't forget to log in. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Today we have our early teens classroom. Yes, early teens. And teacher James is going to be teaching the classroom this afternoon or right now for Kids Connection. So if you have a teenager brother or sister, Tell them to look for the Teens for Christ and join the classroom today. Thank you so much, Mr. James, or, uh, <coughs> well, Mr. Hearn. He also, he goes by James. I love his classroom, so join us. And kids, I am so excited to tell you something new. Well, the teachers from Kids Connection are talking, and we are going to have our first Kids Connection live on Zoom! Yes! So put it on your calendar and join us. Zoom live at 9 o'clock for Kids Connection. Thank you so much for joining us. Stick around to watch your teacher's classroom right now. Until next week, my name is Johnny and the crowd goes wild. <sighs> goodbye kids, goodbye! See you around. Bye bye. Thank you for joining. Bye 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 bye. Just kidding. This lion is our friend. He is our friend here, at Kids Connection. Good lion! Rawr. Hi! Good morning, kids. Welcome to Kids Connection. I'm glad you stayed for the second part of the program. 
you're going to enjoy today's lesson. Why don't we go ahead and stretch? Uh, stretch, stretch, stretch. Yes, can we hug the person that's beside us? Let's hug the person that's beside us. It feels so good to hug someone. I hope you guys are doing well. Why don't we have a word of prayer before we begin? Our dear God, thank you for this morning. Please bless each child that is with us this morning and bless their families. Help us to be faithful and to walk with you every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We are glad that you decided to join us today because we have a very special lesson for today. Last week we talked about, who did we talk about? Enoch. Enoch. Enoch walked with God. That must have been an amazing experience, don't you think? Yeah. Yes, that was amazing to be able to walk with God. God created Adam and Eve and he loved, loved, loved spending time with Adam and Eve. Then he loved spending time with Enoch. But there was a little problem with the human beings at that time. What was the problem? Each time that sin got into their hearts, they would walk away further and further and further away from God. So the people were not interested in spending time with God anymore. And God saw that. But there was one person that remained faithful to God and would still look in prayer and he was still obeying God. Who that person is? Noah. Noah, what an amazing, amazing character. Noah, we can find his story. Let's look it up. We're going to look Genesis. Genesis chapter 6, 5. So can you grab your Bibles? Because we're going to be reading the story of Noah today. So let's say, let's see what chapter 6 has to tell us about Noah, okay? Verse 5. The Lord saw how bad the sins of everyone on earth had become. They only thought about evil things. The Lord was very sad that he had to make human, he had made human beings on the earth. His heart was filled with pain. Wow, imagine God's heart be filled with pain because people were just too evil to follow his ways. That was a very sad episode and God passed judgment on the people and that was very hard. I can imagine God suffering when he had to make a decision because he loves you and he loves me, but he doesn't like sin. Wow. And when sin gets into our heart, if we do not make a decision to ask God to remove that sin away, that sin stays with us and it lives inside us. So we need to ask God, please God, remove that sin from me because I don't like it. I don't like that way. But Noah decided to ask in prayer for God's guidance. And every day Noah would say, God, please lead me the way that I should follow. And God spoke to Noah. Let's see what God told Noah. Can we read number 11? Verse 11, we're still on chapter six, verse 11. Let's see what it says. The earth was very simple in God's eyes. It was full of people who did mean and harmful things. God saw how sinful the earth had become all it, all its people were living very sinful lives so god said to noah i am going to put an end to everyone they have filled their hearts with their harmful acts i am certainly going to destroy them and the earth 
So make yourself an ark out of cypress wood. Wow, so God is communicating his plans to Noah. He's telling him, you know what, Noah? People are not changing their ways. I have told them many, many, many times that they need to change their ways and they are acting in a harmful way. They're treating each other in a disrespectful manner. They are not following God's commands. <gasps> Noah was surprised to hear the plan. Imagine they're telling you to build an ark. Noah probably had no experience building an ark. And you know the ark was bigger than a football field. So if you've ever been to a football field, imagine the ark was even larger than a football field. Imagine all the wood that was required. He couldn't go to Home Depot and buy some wood. That would have been nice. Hey, load the truck up with all the lumber that we're gonna use. But you know what? They had to cut the tree, they had to level out the wood, and they needed to start putting the ark together. That was quite a task to do. So Noah said, why do I need to build an ark, God? Because, okay, I understand it's going to be very big, but that means that I need to hide there until everyone else around me, all the generation, it's over? Or why do I need to seclude myself inside an ark? And God said, you know, Noah, let me reveal you the second part of the plan. And we can find it in verse 17. And it says, I'm going to bring a flood on the earth. Wait, what is a flood? Noah said, how can there be a flood if we've never seen one? God said, Noah, it will destroy all life under the sky. It will destroy every living creature that breathes. Everything on earth will die. But, here's the big but in verse, in verse 18. It says, but I will make my covenant with you. You will go into the ark, your sons and your wife and your son's wife will enter it with you. Third phase of the plan, bring an ark, there will be a, a flood, so get inside. Number three, bring animals. That was a huge project to do. I can't even imagine the weight on his shoulders that he had. He needed to build a big ark that he had never built before or had ever seen before. Number two, he needed to make sure that his family was inside because there was going to be a flood that no one had heard before. And number three, he needed to bring animals inside that they were not trained. How can I bring the animals to the ark if those animals are not trained to follow? Right now I'm feeling no stress. And I'm getting anxious because I would have said, God, I don't want to do this. I'm sorry. I'm not a builder. I, I do not know the certainty of a flood because I've never seen a flood before. And you know, God, animals don't obey me. The other day I was just running because a squirrel was trying to eat my food. And, the, and, the, and I said, stop. And the squirrel wouldn't stop. How can you tell me now that I'm going to tell to that squirrel, come into the ark? But you know, those were not Noah's arguments. Those were be my arguments. But Noah said, number 22, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Why didn't Noah run away from this huge task? 
Noah obeyed God. And so did his family. And God kept his promises. He guided him to be able to build an ark. He secured his family inside an ark and prepared themselves from a flood. An angel guided the animals so they can get inside the ark. When you do the things God has commanded, trust in God. Even when no one around you is doing what God has commanded you to do. Even when no one is watching, follow God and obey him just as Noah did. No one had seen a flood, but Noah made the decision to trust in God. There are many things that we could be laughed at. You could say, why are you doing that? Don't even do that. Everyone is making fun of everyone. Just go ahead and do the same thing. You know, if we're at the cafeteria and no one is guarding the cupcakes, just go ahead and grab one. No one's gonna tell you anything. Just go ahead and grab it. Don't pay for it. The person who's in charge is just on a break, so you could just go ahead and take the cupcake. No one's gonna know. But God knows. We need to walk in integrity, even when no one around us is watching. Even when everyone else is doing the same thing, we always have a decision to make, and that is to follow God and obey. This week, you're gonna be studying the lesson of Noah with your family. This week, you're going to be studying the amazing story about a man who decided to follow God even through adversity and even when people were laughing at him, even when no one around him was doing the right thing, he decided to follow God's command. I hope you enjoyed the lesson for today. I hope to see you back next week. And now let's have a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you very much. Thank you because through this lesson, you show us how Noah obeyed you and you kept your promise of protecting him. We want to ask you this morning to come into our hearts and bless us so that when no one around us is doing the right thing, we can still do the right thing to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, kids. Have a great day. I hope you liked your lesson. And Uxval, thank you for being with us today. Come back sometime soon, okay? Thank you. Bye, kids.